My next guest is the newest member of the UFC roster. He is the former LFA featherweight champion. It is Kevin Aguilar joining me here on the program. Kevin, how are you? Doing good, man. Doing good. It's good to see you, man. Uh, it's good to see you as well, man. How weird does it sound that I not only say UFC fighter, but also former LFA champion? Has it sunk in yet that you got signed to the UFC? Honestly, not really, man. It just it's still kind of surreal to me. And uh, but uh, here in a few uh, here in a week or so, I'm going to be fighting in, in Las Vegas. And, and people in the know, and I was, I was going to say people in the know, you know, th this is long overdue. I, I don't know what you had to do to get that call up, but finally you get it. Um, when did you find out about this opportunity? Because this is a short notice fight. You're taking on uh, Rick Glenn on the Ultimate Fighter 28 finale. We found out two weeks prior to the fight and uh, they just kind of called us, said, hey, we need you short notice. And I'm like, oh, like, oh man, I just got really nervous. And, and then, but, you know, when the UFC calls, you show up. You you go you go show up and you uh, you put on a show. Was this a bit of a surprise, or were you expecting this after you won on the Contender Series? We kind of knew we were just playing the waiting game with the UFC. We didn't know when we were going to get called up, but I mean that's the next logical step for me. I'm uh, I'm the highest in my division uh, at the moment, and and there's no there's no other step besides the UFC. So now now that I got my call up, well we had no idea we were getting called up. Um, just out of the, out of the blue like this for a short notice fight. So now we got the call. We're ready. We're ready to go. We're hungry, and um, we're gonna go to work. Was there ever a point where you thought this might not happen? Because uh, you know we had talked fight after fight. You were getting these highlight reel wins, and and the call up just wasn't happening. Man, honestly, uh, I thought it wasn't gonna happen. At one point, uh, I was seeing other guys that my opponents have defeated uh, get called up. They're signed to the UFC with uh um, with records that i have i have better records than them and i'm like thinking like dang what have i done or what do i need to do more to get called up i guess it's not going to happen so then just a regular day and all of a sudden got the phone call i was like ha finally let's go to work <laughs> And let's talk about your opponent here, Rick Glenn, a very notable guy, you know, made the move to Team Alpha Male last year. He's coming off a big win over Dennis Bermudez. How do you feel like you match up against him here? Oh, man, we got we got kind of similar records. He's tall. He's a southpaw. And uh, I, I, I feel like we're going to go in there and bang it out, man. We're going to uh, throw some uh, throw some leather and uh, put on a fight that the fans want to see. And the big question, obviously, we got Thanksgiving this weekend, American Thanksgiving, I should say. Uh, how's the weight going? Because uh, I know, uh, you know, you, you fought at 45. You've never missed weight. But, um, you know, obviously with Thanksgiving and the short notice, uh, people got to ask, how's the weight cut going? Oh, man, the, the weight cut's never an issue. If, the, if you're prepping for a fight for the UFC, you stay on point all the time, no matter if it's Christmas or Thanksgiving or Halloween. That, that's never a factor here. And uh, who have been some of your main training partners for this uh, short camp? I mean, I know you're always in the gym, but I'm sure camp officially, you know, uh, really honed in uh, these last two weeks. Oh, I like to thank my, my homeboy Ariel Juarez, Brant Moore, Steve Jones, and, um, and there's somebody else. Brant Moore, Ariel Juarez, Steve Jones, and Derek Krantz, and uh, James Compton, and Wade Pomeroy, Larry Maxim. Uh, and Josh Gonzalez with the API, they're, uh, they, I got to contribute a lot of, a lot of thanks to them. They've been getting me ready for all, uh, for this short notice fight. And, uh, you know, thank you guys. And I appreciate it. And, and on that same note, because this is short notice, who's going to be in your corner for this fight? It's going to be my head coach, Wade Pomeroy, uh, James Compton and, uh, Larry Maxson. They're, they're going to be in my corner for the fight. Like all, all my other fights. And how do you see this fight playing out? Anyone who's watched you fight, it's usually a highlight reel finish. How do you see this one going down? Oh, man. Um, honestly, uh, I got to go in there. This guy's a tough opponent, so I got to go in there and uh, outwork him and outstrike him, out jujitsu him, out wrestle him. I just got to go in there and be better. I got to show that I'm hungrier than he is. And, and Rick is a tough guy to finish. I mean, do you have to alter the game plan a little bit just with the fact that, you know, if you go too hard maybe early on, uh, you, you don't want to sort of overexert yourself. Do you kind of look at that just with his durability? Yes, sir, absolutely. Uh, I just have to I just have to outthink him. I have to outfight him, outthink him. Part of you have a chip on your shoulder in a, in a bit of a way, not only for not getting called up before, but also, you know, the contender series performance. I know you probably would have liked a better one in that. I think people don't take into factor that, you know, the short notice and you moving up a weight class. I mean, you're a natural 45 or does part of you want to really put on a good show to kind of erase that performance? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. 
every every show I put on, I want to make it better than the last. I want it to be memorable. I want it. I want it. I want it to make history. You know, that's how that's how I see every fight. Um, like it's gonna be better than the last. It's gonna be something phenomenal. It's gonna be. It's gonna make history. People are gonna remember it. That's what I want to see. And what has Thanksgiving looked like for you this year? Have you been able to see any family? Like, how does that work when you have this short notice fight and you can't eat as, eat as uh, much turkey and stuffing as you'd like? I'm sure. Oh, uh, it's uh, not really a problem. My family's uh, doing their own thing, and uh, they know I'm I'm working, so uh, they understand completely. They support me completely, and uh, you know they uh, they always tell me that hey, we'll see you after after your fight, and uh, then we'll celebrate. Um, so they're very understanding. And the task at hand is Rick Glenn on November 30th. But does part of you look at, at a potential fight down the line with Bobby Moffat? You guys almost fought in LFA uh, when he fought for the interim title. That didn't end up happening. Is that a fight you'd like at some point? Or are you just going to you know fight whoever they give you? Absolutely. Bobby Moffat, anybody in the division who they throw at me, I want to fight. I want to always make it a great fight. Uh, you know, I'm starting at the bottom of the bottom at the UFC. So they're, they're going to throw me opponents and I'm going to run through them. And, you know, keep climbing the ladder. That's, uh, that's how I want to do it, man. And, and with all this stuff going on, Thanksgiving, you know, getting ready for this fight, getting ready for the debut, uh, what is downtime looking like right now uh, in terms of trying to keep your mind, you know, sane uh, throughout all this chaos? Oh, man, that's, that's not a problem, man. Uh, downtime, there is no downtime. It's always on the grind. You're always working. The only time you relax is whenever you're done training and you're at home, and that's it. You know, you're, you're constantly on the grind. So no no TV no Thanksgiving movies anything like that? Uh not really not really uh uh let's see here maybe maybe you know whenever we're not exhausted and uh we might catch a movie or something uh see what's out what's out that's really popular right now well the Creed uh, movie I, mean, I was gonna say a lot of people are trying to go see that one uh, that that seems like a popular I'd choice say, uh we might go actually watch the Creed movie tonight and there maybe you go. Uh, the Robin Hood movie Hood. Yes. Yeah. I'm hearing some good things about that too. See, I told you, I knew there'd be a little bit of downtime in there, right? I, I had a feeling because you can't just, uh, you know, I, and I know obviously you're putting the work in the gym, but you need sort of that separation. Um, my last question for you here, how much do you feel like not only fighting for LFA as a champion and being in those headlining fights and also fighting on contender series, will kind of get rid of those UFC jitters. You know, we do hear about that when fighters make their octagon debut, having that extra pressure. Do you feel like that's sort of taken away because you've been in those high pressure situations before? I've been at the big show, man. I've been at the big stage. I, I fought the who's who's of fighters. And, you know, I've been the main event for a championship about. For me, it's another day at the office. I'm going to go to work. No matter the stage, uh, I've prepped my, my mind for it. Like, it doesn't matter what stage it is. I'm excited about fighting that opponent across from me. And that's, that's, that's all that matters. Just the opponent across from me and the stage. That's just, it's just a different platform. And we're looking forward to watching this platform. Ultimate Fighter Season 28 finale coming up here uh, next Friday, November 30th. Uh, Kevin, always appreciate you uh, taking the time, man. Again, congratulations on getting the contract. Just remind people where they can find you on social media. And I'm sure you got some thank yous or shout outs or sponsors or anything like that, man. The floor is yours. Man, uh, you can find me on uh, my Facebook, Kevin Aguilar, and uh, my fan page, Kevin Aguilar AOD, uh, my Instagram. Uh, Kevin Aguilar, AOD, and uh, man, uh, all my sponsors who've helped me out, Randy's AC, Avco Roofing, War Tribe for always hooking me up with some great gear, um, you know, Jose Sanchez Law Firm, uh, thank you, bro, uh, let's see here, a bunch of uh, Green Wisdom Health, and uh, you know, everybody who's helped me out throughout the years, and you know, finally, I'm heading to the big show, guys. You know, I'm just going to keep climbing the ladder and making everybody proud. And um, all my teammates uh, who's gotten me ready for this fight, you know, thank y'all.